And he's like, bro, I can give you a deal for six million rand, bro. Next week. It's just one night, bro. And I thought, why would anyone pay you six million rand for sex? Hmm. Clearly, they know that it, that price is, is too low. You know, you're going to pay it here in your mind hmm. until you die. So the first thing I noticed when you walked in is that not to call my Zulu, they're saying it's cool my Omina, not the Zulu from Joburg that is just all over the place and it annoys me a lot. So that tells me that you're from KZN, no? Without a doubt, my brother. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> Where in KZN? Yes, it's Kawin, very close to Ngwelezane, Richards yes. Bay, that coastal, side of the world. Yes, uh, coastal township um, in Richards Bay. Yeah, yeah. Um, home of a lot of important stuff, um, greatly talented people, sure. important political figures, a lot of um, important historical figures as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. That's where I'm from, my brother Skawini. Just as a segue, everybody from Skawini seems to go to CFCI for church. Have you ever gone there? <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm always going against the grain, so I went to EFCI. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. there's an EFCI? Yeah. Like What's the difference? Our trifles. Really? In Christ. <laughs> <laughs> is that even possible? It is, clearly. Um, I don't know how it works. I think they have different doctrines and different ways to approach yeah. um, the whole Christ thing. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah it's called Epineza Family Church International. Since we're there and we speak about rivalry and competitiveness, are you happy that you're famous? Whoa. That's actually... <laughs> this is my first ever podcast, by the way. <laughs> and I've been avoiding podcasts because... I, I just don't like the questioning style and everything, right? Yeah. But that's a powerful question. Sure. And I've never been asked that ever in my life. Uh -huh. And the answer is no, bro. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. In all honesty, um, it takes away... You know when you're listening to a song and you're like, who's that? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's a good marketing tool because mm -hmm. everyone wants to know and then they find out about you, right? Okay. Now I could make the craziest, best song in the world. And someone's going to be like, who's that? And they're like, it's Flex. It's like, oh, okay. He's supposed to make a song like that in any case, you know? So it does make it a bit more difficult to penetrate people's hearts because they already have a preconceived idea of your talent and what it's supposed to be. Isn't it supposed to be beautiful, though, that people have, they celebrate you for what they expect from you, but you presenting it to me that rather it feels like a burden? It does, bro. Like... Um, I can't just walk around wherever I want to walk around and just do normal stuff. What if I'm broke that time mm -hmm. and I need to really take a taxi? I really, really need to take a taxi to go somewhere and do some normal stuff that normal South Africans do. Sure. Right? But it's not as normal if you're somebody that people know and they're going to keep you like, hey, bro, why are you here? Why are you here? You know? So fame does kind of make your life, you feel like everyone is watching you. And even when they're not watching you, it can still feel like they're watching you. And that's where the the whole mental health thing comes in for yeah, a lot yeah. of other artists who end up taking substances just to manage the feelings and the chemistry in their body, bro. Would you say, though, that people are letting, as a famous person, you can correct me, that it's allowing external circumstances to infiltrate how you think and how you condition your emotions. Because in all honesty, if you're going through a rough patch as a person who has a normal job, mm. um, as a person who's unknown, you can easily regress and reboot your life, try to make ends meet, ask help from friends. Mm. But you're saying as a famous person, mm. sometimes even asking for help is embarrassing. It's not as easy as if I just worked a normal job at Pick and Bay. Like I could tell my parents, yo, can you please assist me with X, Y, and Z? But first of all, this whole fame thing, you're basically searching for validation from mm. other people. 
Let's keep it real, right? Correct. Yeah. Correct. If, you, if you're trying to be famous, there's a void inside you hmm. that you're trying to fill using other people's thoughts about you. So already people's thoughts matter to you. The first time that you go into the entertainment space, sure, you care what sure, people think, sure. right? So you carry that thing into the space and even when you're experiencing real life situations, you still can't allow yourself to be vulnerable and invalidated by people, right? You want them to look at you as some beacon of um, hard work or whatever it is that you're trying to portray. So you can't then go back to the same people and be like, like my own family, bro, I can't ask them for anything. Hmm. Like it's been like eight years of that now. 10 years of Because that. you're their beacon of hope. You're, you're supposed like, to be their beacon of hope. You're the guy who's supposed to be yeah. doing things for us. So what do you mean? And they will go straight into making sure that they denigrate your hustle if you tell them, yo, bro, I'm down right now. They're like, yes, I told you. Forget about this thing. Go and get yourself a proper job. Go get some stability. Whatever, whatever, right? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. fame puts you in a very weird position where people want to make you some sort of a god figure and you're really not bro you're just somebody who's chosen a talent that puts them in the people's eyes you know would you judge people who go into substance abuse womanizing because the fame has taken over i'm not at liberty to judge anyone but i understand what they're doing and i wouldn't do it personally because i'm i'm living my life but i'm also sitting somewhere watching my life as i live it right so i'm able to take decisions based on what i think is going to happen down in the future so i know myself as a person right i know what makes me extremely angry extremely mm -hmm. happy extremely sad whatever right so i would never put myself in a situation where i'd need drugs to balance my mind right but if someone else were to find themselves in that situation i don't know how they grew up I don't know if they had a mom or a dad or a family structure. I don't know who they spoke to to discuss their feelings growing up, right? So I can't judge them. I can only judge me. And that's why I haven't done drugs because I'm judging myself. I'm like, you know what? You can't do that because you have a greater understanding of your body, your chemistry, your future, whatever's going on. But I can't judge. Man, look, what if you didn't have a dad growing up? Mm -hmm. What if you didn't have a dad growing up, then you got famous, and then all of a sudden, all these women say they love you now. And you're like, okay, let me test this out. Let me test out this theory. Uh, all these people say they love you. You feel like you're accepted into a family, peer pressure. You're going to take those drugs. They're going to sure, offer sure, you some stuff to sure. feel like you're part of the fold. So I'm not like that. I'm the guy who's literally always going to say no to everything. Even if it's something that might be good for me at that point, I'm just going to say no until I figure out that it's really good for me. Hey family, a quick one. Over 87% of you are consuming this content every single week, but are not subscribed. That means you are enjoying the growth conversations, but you are not liking, you are not subscribing, and you are not sharing it with others. So please, I plead with you, please subscribe so that you can share the love, you can share the growth, and you can share this wonderful platform and wonderful safe space with others as well. Enjoy the episode. I love that you say that, that even if it is good for me at that point because something can be good for a specific milestone but not good for your entirety. Would you say that you saying no in those instances, which I'm sure you have been offered drugs before to be in certain social spaces, mm. was a career-limiting decision and mm. it has made you not reach heights you possibly could have reached? Bro, I've said no to so many things, eh? Um... And it was career limiting. Details. <laughs> okay, let's first go back to my first biggest no, right? Yeah. My 2017, 18 no, when yeah. I said no to a record deal with Fit Season. RIP, AKA, man, that's a legend. He built that label. He was the first artist that they signed and became successful. But during that time when when I was offered the deal, AKA was on his way out. He was trying to get out. Okay. Right? Um, so let's just look at the timelines real quick. We were making a joke about um, 
a brother here and you're like you were born in 2000 yeah, yeah. a lot had already happened in the world sure. so the world is always transitioning right so in 2015 the world was transitioning from physical CDs to streaming digital right yeah. and then in the year 2016 there was the first time that digital surpassed physical in all realms in terms of sales so 2017 was when i got my in into the game right so of course all i needed at that point was the right platform for people to know who i am so i could advertise my music successfully online right so they offered me a deal which was still structured according to the traditional model of CDs and what the game was mm -hmm. prior mm -hmm. to that so when i when i looked at the deal i said um i don't think this is going to work for me because now we 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 are about to enter a stage where people are going to become internet stars back then it wasn't as common right but i knew it was coming because i was studying that whole wave and all of that so i told them i don't think this is going to work for the type of brand that i'm trying to build the type of person that i'm trying to be in the whole in the whole industry and that was the first time i said no to a record deal the answer that i got back from them was good luck hmm. of course there wasn't a pure good luck sure you know there was like okay you think you can do this mm, mm, i could mm. it see if you can really do it right and then that uphill battle was placed against me they made sure that uh i wasn't going to get playlisting like the normal kids do uh, i'm not going to be on tv like normal kids do and on top of that they're going to try and organize shows that are far away from where i am and then try to take my life type stuff all right um not to say who because we're not here to to um cause any more beef mm -hmm. than mm -hmm. we already have i'm just trying to tell you that like what has no done to me yeah, right yeah yeah that me personally with my understanding i don't think it's fair like right now as things are happening i just i go to my place i record a song mix master it create the artwork send it online start streaming right that deal would have had me submitting songs them telling me what they think works what doesn't um they give me a percentage of the streams like 30 40% yeah, at yeah, the end yeah. of it all they basically will go into control um things that they don't need to control bro let's be real like and like what dude why would why do i need you to upload for me like, like why because yeah. that's the game right now. The game is upload right now. Yeah, yeah. Would you go to someone's upload your, your podcast for you? Would you? It's absolutely not happening right now. <laughs> yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So it wasn't that easy in 2017, but that's where it was going the mm. whole time, mm. right? So I already had the understanding. So I told them, I can't sign like five albums. We just are guys only going to press upload. I already have the producers. I already have the features the relationships that i need to work with me what are you guys really going to bring to the table right and that no led to me having an uphill battle they're like how are we going to make sure that this is not as easy we're going to set an example for you and anyone else is going to follow or try to follow in your footsteps if that's not how it works right so no has been a, a career limiting decision and that was just the first one there was a lot of other things that happened but yeah we'll come back are those people who said no to you rather that you said no to mm -hmm. because you were protecting your peace and you you looked at the overall longevity of your career and mm -hmm. how it was you felt it was unfair and how the deal was structured mm -hmm. are those people still affecting that same level of blocking off um in inverted commas destroying other people's careers um see one thing about me bro i don't like to place blame on people okay right? i always like to think about what could i have done differently or what was my role in all of this okay right and that type of thinking led to me also not being focused on what the people on the other end were doing to me i was like nah this is all me this this must be my fault i have to fix this and that and then how it ended up getting to me to understand that there was actually other forces at play aside from uh, me just trying to go forward to other people pushing me back i came to find out through someone who was trying to book me right um 
they sent me emails to my booking email, which was African Star, Justine at African Star Communications. Mm -hmm. Sent an email multiple times to say, yo, when is this man available? We want to book him. Here's the budget. Water, 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 water. This is the date. Three emails, no responses until he called a friend of mine, um, contacted my friend, sent the screenshots on their WhatsApp. They were like, yo, bro, look at this. These people aren't responding to your booking emails. What's happening? And then I gave them a call. I was like, yo, guys, is somebody trying to book me? What's happening on that side? They're like, oh, we never saw anything. I'm like, yeah, but here's the proof of the sent emails here on my side. What do you mean you never saw anything? And they're like, what are you trying to insinuate, Flex? Are you insinuating that we're sabotaging you? I was like, whoa, that's not what I said. Mm -hmm. I was just asking what if, happened. If you saw the emails or not. <laughs> like, yeah. why are you jumping the gun straight to sabotage? Sure. You know? And then me and that guy finalized the show. That, that got done. Simple. I did some submissions to another prominent channel part of the family of channels where I won that show. Yes. Um, did my submission. They sent me an email. Thank you. Received in good order. Will be playlisted. A video that I paid money for out of my own pocket to make sure that it's high quality. They can't say you didn't follow the specifications or what I made sure I followed it to the T. The quality of the music was produced by Lunatic. I don't know if you know mm -hmm. him. Mm -hmm. Quality song. Everything was quality. I sent it to them and they sent me an email, don't worry, we'll playlist it. Pew. Then they went quiet. I searched, sent emails, followed up, nothing. And then now I'm starting to piece the dots together, right? I'm trying to like understand, like, is this, am I imagining this? Is this a real um, effort to get this to happen? I sit down, I'm like, nah. Then I speak to Scoop. Right, I mm -hmm. speak to Scoop Makatini. I'm like, yo, bro, I want to come through on turn up. There was still turn up. Sure. I want to come through on turn up, bro. He's like, bro, we've had everybody from the show on here except you. And you were the winner. And you're the winner. And we're here to talk about the show that you've won, but you're never here. He actually lost his job at Channel O for that, for speaking out on that live on the show, right? So I came to understand, okay, cool. Maybe I was underestimating the importance of the point that they're trying to prove, right? Maybe I just thought, but I'm not looking at it as like, I'm just a little boy from Ms. Kawini. I just came here to do my thing. Yeah, I don't yeah. think I could possibly have... Enemies. Enemies. Opponents. Like, yeah, yeah. who cares that much about me? Sure. Like, they didn't even know I exist up mm -hmm. until the day they saw me on TV. And then I realized, now nah, I'm playing myself. Like, all of these companies are now... Teasing. Now they're like, okay, cool. We're not just only not going to make it easy for you, but we're also not going to try and make it hard for you. Because there's a story that I told that became a huge deal online through me, my issue with reason, right? My issue with reason didn't even come from rap. I don't even care about reason. I don't even think he's a rapper that I should care about, right? But... What he was representing at that point was what made me flip. Because I was going through so many doors to find out that there's actually a Zorb on my name on each and every door. So I went to speak out about it on Twitter. And then he came and was like, yo, why are you telling us about your problems? So if, if, if any of this had worked out for you, you wouldn't be telling us. And in my mind, I'm like, who's this guy? Why is he talking to me? And why is he trying to act like some savior of the game? All right, cool. What had really happened was I was at MTV Base to submit a music video. I ran into DJ Vigilante, who took my video. He said, oh, but I don't worry. We're going to make sure we play it because my album was out number one on every platform, Apple Music, whatever. So it's like, okay, don't worry, we're going to play it. And then as I walk out of the office, I ran into the boss of Fit Season. He was going to meet with VG that day. Look, I never told nobody this story, but you know what? If I gotta die, I gotta die. Eventually, we all gonna die, right? You're gonna die as well. Don't act serious. We all gonna die. So 
that day uh, I handed in my video and I left and the video was was picked up on Channel O but not on MTV base. They played it on, on, on Channel O, MTV base not, right? And then I asked VG, yo VG, you got my video, why didn't you play it, bro? He's like, uh, d- 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 quality. We had an issue with the quality. I'm like, oh, so you guys and, and, and Channel O don't use the same metrics for quality. So they, and I was like, just stop lying. Tell the people the truth. Because mm-hmm. I saw who you were with that day. Mm-hmm. Just tell the people why you're not going to play my songs and stop acting like it's a me issue, you know. And then it became a huge thing. Like, you know what? We're going to have to block this guy more. Because Vichy was the head of Universal at that time. The head of a and at Universal. Um, while at the same time working at MTV Base Viacom. So he had his own power to make sure that this don't happen. Nota came in as well, talking about, I don't respect the game. I'm shooting videos on my phone. I need to be blocked. And then he goes on interviews and talks about how proud he is that he he hindered my progress at some point. You know. So now, obviously, I'm not in the same position of of being too worried about what they do because the internet is much more open now, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, it's mm-hmm. much more open. And the lovely thing is people who are actually for the culture or recognize my importance and say no to people who want to control us for no reason, right? They all get it. All the youngsters that are coming up right now, they're forever at my studio. I've got songs with them. Like even top dogs come to my studio. We make songs with them because now... The sentiment is, you know what? With all of this that's going on, it's proven again in piano as an industry. They thought hip hop was the problem. Uh, you guys, you guys don't want to be controlled. It's happening to our piano artists now, all right? They're the ones who are suffering for their masters and everything. So now, even for them, it's a full circle moment. They're coming back and they're like, "Bro, you saw it." So I'm, I feel like my redemption arc is is nearing its completion. I'm not that bothered about what happened back then. Uh, and whatever efforts that they're still trying to conjure up now, Flex, I, I feel that you're being honest about what you felt was being done to you and what you had evidence of what was being done to you based on, on, on what you're saying here. Um, but in all of this, uh, we sometimes have a victim mentality as people where we don't take stock of what we contributed Mm -hmm. for things to not work out. Mm -hmm. At any point, did you not feel, hey, maybe I'm moving weird. Maybe I'm arrogant. Maybe I don't Mm -hmm. treat people well. That's why they don't respond well to me. Mm -hmm. Because it can't just be a plethora of sabotage over sabotage Mm -hmm. over sabotage. Maybe Mm -hmm. you didn't have the wisdom to respond to people appropriately Mm -hmm. when they were offering opportunities. Or maybe the no's you said could have been yeses or maybes. There's always a better way to approach things. That's very true, bro. Like, like I said, I always like to put the blame on me first before I analyze what's going on on the other side. Because if you're going to go to war, you have to first strengthen your own army then know what's going on in the other army and then strengthen your army again. Because one thing that we also need to be careful of, we mustn't let people who are evil gaslight us into thinking that everything is your fault. Hmm. Correct. Because they're the ones who control terminology in the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're the ones who are flooding people with that thinking. It's anything that goes wrong in your life is your fault. Mm -hmm. What did you do for to happen? Yeah, I hear you. Did you do anything for Simply not. Nothing, right? Yeah. But now with that mentality, they want you to turn around and say it was your fault. Said, wearing a mask or, You're not wearing yeah, a mask. Yeah. Where was I when you were conjuring it up in the lab? Yeah. I wasn't there, bro. Yeah. So, yes, you can be responsible for certain things in your life, but they can also be powers that are greater than you. That will affect you, whether or not you believe in them or you, you acknowledge they exist, but they will affect you. Yeah. Right. So I'm not going to say I was 3000% innocent in anything that happened. No, bro. I had my own issues going on. Like I was still dealing with the newfound fame. Right. Okay, cool. 
You dropped out of school six months ago and now you're famous. What's the next step? I have my own plans on how to move. I already had a whole plan on how to move, but the plan didn't involve dodging enemies. I get you. You see, it, it, it was a plan that in my mind when I built it, everyone was going to be on my side because I didn't think that this would turn out to be something that's this huge, right? Because even with my, my situation with multi-choice, like everyone forgets how nice you are when you finally show them how fucked up you can be. They all forget like how nice you actually are on a normal day. And they take advantage of that because they think perhaps you're not aware that you're actually exercising being nice right now. They think, oh, perhaps this person is just an idiot of God. Let's just use them, use them, use them. Because if I was such a horrible person, I wouldn't have any of the relationships that I still had from eight years ago. I wouldn't have any of them right now as mm -hmm. we speak. Mm -hmm. I still have the same producers, the same everything. Even all the journalists who wrote about me still call me today and want to write about me. Sure. All the radio stations I went to, they still want me back. All the publications, everyone still wants me to come back. So if I'm such a fucked up person, why are these people still gravitating towards me? Shouldn't they all be saying, ah, ah the problem is with this guy? Because, okay, here's another thing that happened, Joe. Before I shot the final episode of Vuzu Hustle, I went missing. Missing? Yeah. As in you decided to not respond to anyone? Or, yeah. Okay. You ghosted everyone? I ghosted the whole production. Because <laughs> that's, that's the word that's used nowadays. Yeah. I yeah. decided I'm going to ghost the production because they weren't being transparent. Bro. Okay. Right? When we all got into the Vuzu hustle, I was already a rapper before Vuzu, bro. Mm -hmm. I, I was already in Josie. I was already going to make a plan happen. Lunatic was already signed with Cash Time. He made Kara Kara, made all the hits. He was my main producer. Already, I was on the path. Okay. You know, it's not like I got dusted from MTN rank and put in front of a mic, mm -hmm. learned how to pass rhymes there, and then they made me. They ain't made me, bro. Since 2003, I've been writing rhymes, bro. So it's not them, right? So <clears throat> you I don't. Posted. I don't want. Yeah, I just wanna. I want that thing to be clear. Like I wasn't made by the show, okay. but anyway, when we got into the show, we we signed a contract with the production team, right? Um, we signed a contract. The contract was basically how we're going to live in the house, what are the rules and everything, what everything. So we, we read the contract as a group, 25 of us, we signed it, done. And then I requested to see the contract later on. Can I have a copy of the contract? Because that's only right. You can also see the contract on and see what's going on. Um, this like, like, oh, don't worry, we're going to show you the contract, guys, don't worry, as soon as it's top 10. Got to top 10 as soon as it's top 5. It's top. I was like, you guys think I'm playing here, hey? You guys literally think I'm playing. I want to see the contract. They're like, I don't worry. Let's just finish the, the episodes and whatever. Then I did it. And I was an outright performer. It was pretty clear that even before the finale, it was clear that I was smoking Joshua, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, shout out Joshua. Um, so on the day before the, the finale was shot, I asked to see the contract one last time. And they gave me another story. And I was like, okay. Not a problem. I'm also not coming to shoot the finale. I would like to forfeit. Just give it to Joshua. Because I'm not willing to take on whatever the contract says in case I win. If the contract says if you win, then you have to be signed for five albums to XY label. I don't want that. So let me forfeit all the winnings. I'll take whatever little clouds I have and go build a new platform. I hear you. They said, no, we're not going to allow you to do that. So we're going to give you the contracts. They came they, they came with shuttles to my place. I was living in Auckland Park. Came with shuttles to my place. They fetched me. I went to the boardroom to meet with the whole production team, the head of reality, commissioning editor, all of them. We sat down, we spoke. And I asked them, can you please show me the paragraph or the clause that says, as soon as I win, I have to sign to this label. We read through, we didn't find the clause. 
So I said, okay, cool. That means I don't have to do it. Is that correct? And then they all looked around in the room like, yo, what is this guy saying now? Because that's the price. Like, I I want the money. I want my car. I want the PR deal. But I do not want the record, record deal. deal. Yeah. Is that such a difficult thing to... And they're like, no, the prizes are grouped. I was like, if they grouped, then I'd like to forfeit. Don't give me any of the prizes. It's okay. I promise, guys. I'll just go and rap again. Of course, they agreed to to shoot the episode, sign the do the do the finale. But at the end of it all, we didn't sign the contract. So they decided they're not gonna give me the car. They're not gonna give me the money. They're going to sabotage the PR deal and everything, right? And I was like, I'm not going to allow this to happen. Like, honestly. Me and Amfetu, like you asked me, like, where am I from? I says, cow in me. You know, I'm mm, mm, mm. Within me. I'm always ready to fight for what's right. Not, not even if it affects me, bro. But what's right has to be fought for, bro. You know? So I was like, this is not right. This can't happen. I went on Twitter, I started a campaign, they unleashed all my things, they gave them to me. And then this guy came out, he was the head of communication at Eminence at that time, Ryan. Ryan was like, bro, I don't think you know what you're getting yourself into, hey? Eh? I was like, bro, I'm so tired of you guys threatening me, hey? Like, I'm just so tired of your threats, guys. Just do it. Do whatever you're going to do, bro. Like, I'm tired of you threatening me. This is exactly what I was avoiding going into a record deal because I know the mind games that they play at, at record labels. I've been around a lot of people who've been signed. I know the mind games that they play to control you and keep you at a certain level. So, I'm like, I'm not going to have this from you, Ryan. You're just head of communication. But then, you know, something as big as Mnet, a billion-dollar company... Um, has more influence than you'd like to admit with blogs, channels, stations, and, and a lot of other things. So after he told me that, like, you, you must watch out. You know, open times live, I see my name. They're writing about me. So whatever, anything I tweet, it can be the most innocent thing like that's meant to, because me and Mankulum, I'm always speaking from. I'm a teacher, bro. You know what I'm saying. So whatever I learn, I share it with whoever. So if I'm sharing something with like some upcoming artists, and I tell them, yo, here's a way that you can structure your thing, because I'm in this position now. How about you also try and learn to do whatever, whatever. You'd find that on on the net. They say I'm I'm speaking badly about whatever. I'm crying. I'm compl- I'm. Like, I literally had no time for that, bro. Like, as soon as I left Vuzu and I got out of there, I did, like, one year of just shows. After that, I had my own business running, dude. I had no time for all of that. But I would constantly see my name, Times Live, what, what, what. I even forgot that guy's name who was always writing about me. I had promised myself that if I see him, I'm slapping him. But um, lucky him, I even forgot who he was now. So in terms of Mugisho, by saying all of that is my image never really got to get out the right way to people. It never got to be curated the way that I actually am because there were forces who were trying to make sure that everyone believes that this guy is mentally unstable. He's um, like a firecracker. He's always going to be late. He's always going to do like whatever they can say was always there. So whenever I speak to people in things I'm about, that's why I even stopped doing any interviews or any podcasts because whenever I try to speak to somebody and let, let them know how things actually transpired, they already have this idea, this propaganda that was put in their minds of how to receive me as mm-hmm. I speak, mm-hmm. right? So as I'm saying, the people, the only people who haven't been affected by that propaganda is people that met me personally during that time, promoters, journalists, radio hosts, whatever, they know the truth of who I am. But obviously I couldn't reach everyone quicker than TV or or newspapers or whatever could, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yes, I do acknowledge that I was not perfect. I wasn't a mean machine of productivity or whatever. 
but dude, I don't know all of the things that they're speaking about. Like most of them, I'm just confused as to how did we even get in this position, right? Because African Star, which was meant to be my PR team, they're the ones who are leading the charge in, in releasing those stories, those unsavory stories about me. Because they were also part of that whole team of companies who I basically feel like were disappointed and who felt like um, their investment into Vuzu Hustle just got burnt because of how I reacted, right? So those companies were like, no, we're not going to let a little boy from his cow come here and destroy something that we've been building. Because Vuzu Hustle still ain't come back seven years later. It still ain't come back because what they did in trying to show their power and how they can destroy somebody made people lose faith in, in their production because they're supposed to elevate the people that they that they put on the platform, right? But they, I don't know, they, they turn around and they're the ones who finish you off. It's kind of crazy. Big Star Johnson sat on that same seat in February mm. and he was also relaying his experience that came from fame that was caused by Vusu Hustle. And he took accountability that fame actually made him lose his mind to an extent. It, it mm. made him spend a lot of money unnecessarily. It made him party mm. like crazy. Mm. It made him spend a lot of money. He developed a character where he didn't know who he was. You hear saying that actually fame didn't do that to me. Instead, um, it almost destroyed me because I was too woke and I knew my rights. Um, would do you still maintain that? No, I, I wasn't. The bells and whistles and the clits and clam didn't cloud my judgment. And till this day, those who know know that I was done wrong. Bro, here's another thing. Bro. I've been popular my whole life, okay. Joe. Like, I, I don't struggle with popularity. I was popular in primary school, preschool, high school, university. So the thing of having people just attracted to me and it's not new. I was like in UKZN, right? In UKZN, I was literally a famous rapper among 70,000 people. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people already, correct, right? Correct. So my mentality, like even coming to Johannesburg and it taking roughly six to eight months for me to become like the flex that people knew was because I already knew I was going to be that person. I already had the support of people in Durban, people in Richards Bay. So fame wasn't like, wasn't new, bro. Like I, it was just the thing of, okay, now more people know me. But being famous, like it's all popular, it's always been a thing, right? And another thing is spending. Dude, <laughs> like, it's not even a thing, dude. I can't even point to one really expensive thing that I bought. Okay. Like, even alcohol. Like, I, I don't buy alcohol. At the club, I'm a rapper, bro. Niggas just give you alcohol. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You understand? Girls, I, girls Uber themselves to my place to come. <laughs> <laughs> type thing. Like, I ain't done one vacation, nothing. Like, yeah, it, yeah. money... That's not even a real thing, Joe. Because even after that, I went from Vuzu Hustle straight into business and I was making more than that, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so it wasn't, money wasn't even a thing, bro. The people that know the truth, that, that, that have seen how things happened, I think my mistake was trying to act stronger than I, what I was. I hear you. Right? Because... The I system had, is the system. You understand what I'm yeah, saying? The yeah. system is the system, bro. Yeah, I had yeah. the option to just cry about the system and tell people, guys, this is how bad it is. But I acted like, no, you know what? I'll take it on the chin and I'll win. And then I'll tell people how this is done, right? Yeah, yeah. And whilst you're doing that, your, your enemy is not resting just because you're taking time to recalibrate your strategy. They're not, rest, they're not resting, bro. They're out there doing what they're always going to do. And they're going to throw that dirt on your name. They're going to close those doors. I got to Metro FM, very interesting story. Joe, I, I'm already blocked, so I'm, I can say anything. Got to Metro FM to submit my music because a friend of mine, uh, known to X, had submitted her songs 
and she got playlisted and even got to top 30. So now her submission, she used my song, a song that she had, she was featured on, on my album. And they're like, beautiful, we love your stuff. Send us your music. She sends her own song, they playlisted. And then I sent the same song that got her playlisted, and that's mine, right? I sent it to Metro FM. It's like, yeah, um, here's my joint. If you guys don't mind, send submission the right way, you know, ISRC codes, everything. And they rejected it. So you, as a, a thinking gentleman, you tell me, like, how does that work? How can someone get playlisted off your work, but you can't get playlisted off your own work? Is that normal? Devil's Advocate, was it not perhaps because she had put the song as her song and that it was playing already and charting? Let me, let me explain it again to you, right? Yeah. She was on my album. Mm -hmm. That was like her career highlight. Okay. When my album hit number one, she changed her bio and everything and let people know that she's the girl singing on that song, mm -hmm. right? And then she submitted. She said, yo, I am known to singing on Flex's song, this one. I want to submit my music. Oh, her own other music. Yes. I hear you now. Yeah. yeah. They're like, they listen to a song like, wow, it sounds amazing. You sound amazing. Send us your music. She sent her song and then they playlisted that song. And then I took the same song that got her the attention of the compiler and I sent it to them for it to be playlisted. And then that was rejected. So I need to understand, is, is that also me victimizing myself? Who? How? How are you being rejected? I, I'm just throwing in the questions that mm. you asked yourself and those that are consuming this, this content right now are asking themselves. And what answer did you give yourself? That's when I, I said, I have to take an audit of who the enemies are, who's on the other side, right? That's when I named those six corporations, or four of them, not six, that... They have a far more far-reaching hand than you think, you know. They they do control people, bro. Whether or not you like to accept, if someone pays your salary, or let's just say here's your podcast, bro. You get a sponsor from Multi Choice. They're gonna sponsor you with five hundred thousand rand a month. Then you call me on your podcast, and then we speak. And then they review your content. They're like, you're not going to release that one. Sorry. Next. Right? So it's all about where does the money flow come from? So these people that I spoke about are big advertisers. So all these media platforms are always going to respect the advertisers first before they respect you as an artist because there's thousands of other artists. Mm -hmm. Right? But these corporations that are paying this money, it's just them. You understand? So that's how I came to understand. Okay, the game is like that. Radio is not just radio. Radio has advertisers. And if you were to jump into some sort of a quarrel with those advertisers and they say no more, then it's literally no more. Because that same ad money that they're spending is supposed to pay your royalties, right? So if they're no longer spending, you ain't getting no royalties, so they're not going to lose ad spend over you. Goodbye type vibe you know so that's what i'm saying is am i being am i victimizing myself if i say that if i have conclusive proof of that happening not once not twice some of it is still in my email chilling today bro to this day so am i victimizing myself in that sense or am i just receiving real evidence from what the game is doing you're releasing music now. Um, the, your latest song with Sir Trill, I find that, I found that iconic that it's Sir Trill who's there. I was <laughs> like, oh, the rejected guys. <laughs> 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 they said, let's team up. <laughs> I found that iconic. But once again, um, yeah. 
it, it seems to not be helping to go against the system flex. Mm -hmm. So why are you keeping standing your ground against the system? Um, being the anomaly doesn't pay the bills. Or are you saying there's more things that matter in life than money and fame? I think you just, you summed it up there with that yeah. second part. Yeah. Yeah, because, um, dude, I've had a lot of weird opportunities to get money, bro. Like, okay, I'm I'm heterosexual, mm -hmm. but I'm coming out of the closet. I'm heterosexual. <laughs> That's not a closet. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm coming out of that closet. I'm heterosexual, right? And I don't have any issue with any other sexual inclination. But I've had a lot of offers to change my inclination, even for one night. Mm -hmm. For an opportunity. For an opportunity. But it's just a black male thing, right? Because they know that since I know I'm heterosexual, should I, should I be videotaped involved in any type of um, activity that opposes that? Then that could be something that could be used to silence me and my thoughts going forward forever right south africa is so south africa gollywood sounding so much like hollywood right now it's insane it, it's real do our names okay no <laughs> <laughs> but i'm saying like that type of thing has happened to me like a guy pulled up to me is like yo bro influential like, person extremely bro sure extremely like they could take your show off tv type of street like mm -hmm. type power they're like yo bro listen love your music you're one of the greatest of course we listen to your music it's amazing but of course you know that that's not all that matters hmm. here in Josie. i'm like yeah what do you mean and this guy relayed his own story because okay um before i i dropped out of school well after i dropped out of school i was homeless because of course my parents are like what what's wrong with this mm -hmm. guy mm -hmm. So I was homeless. I was living at um, taxi ranks, doing whatever, you know. Type taxi line. ranks, bro. Yeah, wanderers, all types of stuff. Yeah. yeah well. So this guy knew about that story. Then he tried to like, hey, bro, listen, even me, bro. I used to live on the streets, even me. But today, and he pointed to his car outside. It was an M4. Mm -hmm. uh, let me think. Yeah, yeah. Because now I don't want to be too obvious. It was an M4, though. Mm -hmm. Pointed to the M4. It's like, that's my car now. I was like, yo, bro, I'm proud of you. You hustled. He's like, yeah, you need to know the right people here. Let me introduce you. Then he introduces me to some other gentleman. And as soon as he puts his arm over me, I could just feel the energy. Was what like, was the energy? Nigga, I touch girls all the time. Okay, that type of... <laughs> Of touch. <laughs> Do you understand? Yeah. Where you like, girl, what's up? Yeah. And I was just looking at this man. I was like, homie, I don't want to have to bury you today, bro. Mm -hmm. Just take mm -hmm. your hands off me real quick, you know, with a smile on my face. And he was like, bro, I can give you a deal for six million rand, bro. Next week. It's just one night, bro. And I thought, why would anyone pay you six million rand for sex? Hmm. Clearly, they know that it, that price is, is too low. You know, you're going to pay it here in your mind hmm. until you die. And perhaps it could be too high a cost for me. Actually, when I said no to the record deal as well, I thought about the situation that AKA was in. I probably would have shot my boss or done something extreme. So that's why I opted to not put myself in that situation. You know, you know what triggers you. You know how extreme you can get. So I was like, am I really going to be able to deal with that? Because I know I won't fall into drugs. That's one thing I won't do. I'm not going to go into drugs to cope. I'm just going to look at how to solve the problem. And if if Amatole or Tebolet is the only way to solve it, then it might be the only way, right? Mm -hmm. So that I, I, I chose to not do that, you know? And even if the same situation with this guy, like, I was like, man, even if you gave me the six million and I still felt some type of way about it after it happened, I'd probably have to come and find you and deal with that, you know? So I took that decision to 
not value money over everything. Money mm. is very important, bro. Mm. Very important. It's there. But also you're gonna have to live with yourself after all of that, you know? And there must be you must only engage in things that you feel like you can live with, bro. You know? If you feel like you can live with that, then it's okay. If I feel like I can live with that, it's okay. But if I feel like I can't, then I shouldn't because I'm just going to be a a hollow version of myself mm. for the rest of my life, bro. I spoke to, in August, I spoke when she was in the country, Sarah Jakes, and I asked her, how does one find their purpose? And I asked her, why, do you, why does she think many rappers, musicians, actors, very famous people lose themselves, drugs, substance abuse? Um, and she said, because... People attach purpose to their career, right? So, for example, had you attached your purpose in life to the music mm. and the music becoming great and making you multi-millions, mm. perhaps you would have said yes to many things that are actually not in your greater purpose of living, that keep you happy, that keep you mentally, he mentally healthy. Yes, sir. And she said, people become stars and all those things. These are just pockets of fulfillment it's not their greater purpose in life mm. greater purpose is something you live every day where you're in constant peace you know facts bro you have to be in constant peace then you're in purpose and where things around you make sense to your mental health your emotional health your spirituality is aligned mm. so it, it, it just speaks to that point to me where you're saying i said no because my sanity mattered more facts bro facts bro like you know how I linked up with Sir Trill, by the way? Yeah. Sir Trill is, he is an outcast of the industry, right? Mm -hmm. But, man, he's got bangers. Absolutely. Super like, talented. He's undeniable, right? Yeah. And how he found himself in my space as well. Like, I look at things spiritually, not how physically he landed up in my place. That, sure. That is very much easy to explain, mm -hmm. right? But spiritually in terms of the stars aligning how did Sergio end up on a song with me or how did I end up on a song with him it's those decisions those little no's that you make thinking yo I gotta say no now so I can make a song with maybe I gotta say yes maybe so I can make a song with 25k cool 25k or Sergio who, who are you going with Right? Mm -hmm. So sometimes in life, you have to just delay the gratification. Bro. I hear you. And your, your hero's arc makes sense at the end. I've always viewed my life story like that, like from the eyes of a superhero or even Job in the Bible, bro. You know, like he's someone who had it all, lost it all, and then had it all multiplied. Because... When he had it all, God tested him by taking it all away and to see what was going to remain of Job. Was he going to now, because God has taken all the blessings, was he going to change now and say, actually, screw God? Or was he going to maintain that, okay, cool, he might have taken everything away right now, but I am still very much a man of God. And then once he had stayed in that decision, that's when God decided to restore him above what he already had had before, right? So that's how I've always viewed my life in any case. From since I was a child, yeah, playing yeah, sports, yeah. I've always had that thing of, I'm always going to be picked last, but I'm always going to be the be best pick. Hmm. Always, right? So even now, people ask me, yo, bro, you saw you were hindered for like five years. You couldn't do whatever you had to do. It's okay. Have you heard me spit now? I'm probably better than I've ever been. Sure. So this is a benefit to yeah, me. Yeah, For yeah. whoever's going to hear me the first time now, they're going to think, God damn, I've been wasting my time mm -hmm. with all these people. So I don't have that thing of wanting to like, nah, life is long. I'm one, I'm one of those people who are going to live long, mm -hmm. my friend. You see, see me now, you're going to see me 20 years from now again, 30 years from now again, you're going to see me and it's all going to make sense. I, I get you, bro, but that level of resilience is, is not the norm. You've gone through so many rejections that can sometimes even feel like personal failures or other mm. people can deem you a failed artist, for the lack of a better word. Mm. That's painful to deal with, man. Mm. And, and how have you 
reconciled your emotions, your mental mm. health with being labeled like that as, ah, he's one of those one album wonders or whatever. Mm. Well, look, there's real life in this social media, man. You mm. know, <laughs> what people think on social media and what they think in real life is different because on social media, you're actually thinking for reactions. But in real life, you're, you're not thinking for engagement. You're thinking to deduce real facts. Mm -hmm. And I'm one of those artists that once someone gets um, exposed to the reality of what life is really like, as soon as their bubble gets pop popped, I'm one of those artists that they really start to relate with. And we all have our different lanes in life, right? Some of us are here to to heal. Some of us are here to excite. Some of us are here to help people fuck. <laughs> like in reality, some of us <laughs> just make music so niggas can fuck. Yeah. And that's okay, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But after a nigga is hurt, he can go to a nigga who makes sad love songs, goes mm -hmm. listen to Java. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If a nigga tries something which is against the grain or against the system and then they realize how difficult it is, they come and listen to me, bro. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And they're like, oh, damn, this is what it is. So I have a life mission whereby I feel like I'm a leader of men, bro. I'm not here to, to babysit people's feelings or whatever. I'm here to tell men what life really is. And God had to make my life difficult in order to be able to speak from that point. I understand what I'm saying. Because how many, how many rappers can you listen to who are going to give you a point of view on what it's like to to have enemies who are multimillionaires and want you dead mm, mm, mm. and you don't have anything but you're still surviving and outsmarting them in that space somebody's got to tell that story because I, I always look at nas and jay-z's beef right jay-z got hailed as ooh, the goat the winner or whatever who dropped six albums in the last three years it was nas bro who made $300 million cash in the last... It was Nas, bro. Even though it took them like 19 years for it to be clear who's the GOAT, it's clear today, bro. It's very clear. Those who know, they know. So I've always looked at my life as hmm. a life that has to be exemplary at the end of it all, bro. So I'm not worried about... <sighs> Dreams no. delayed, not denied. Nah, this is the dream. Tom. Yeah, I think that. Actually. This is the yeah, dream. Yeah, like, yeah. because you're at peace. Once I get everything, like, I'm not gonna care, bro. I hear you. I'm not gonna be worried about. Look, man, Jesus was the son of God, bro. He came down to earth, left the kingdom, had everything at his disposal, came down, left the kingdom, suffered more than the average man. Mm -hmm who he was here to die for, mm -hmm. their sin. He mm -hmm. suffered more than the average man. But at the end of it all, we still talking about his name 2,000 years later. We don't even know the other guys who said no to the coming down to earth mission. We don't know the other sons of God. We only know the one who took on the responsibility to come and suffer for a good cause. So I feel like maybe growing up in that background of, 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 of viewing your life in terms of the greater meaning of it all it simplified everything for me i don't have like those breakdowns i was like ah, i deserve more bo bro this is it <laughs> this is it i'm making like the deepest thoughts that i could ever have the best rhymes i could ever write come from these moments yeah, yeah you know what yeah. I'm otherwise i'd just be writing about bums bro which is good as well, but I mean... <laughs> it has its audience. <laughs> it has its audience, bro. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Do you believe anyone owes you an apology? No. And do you owe anyone an apology? Okay, let me think about that, bro. Because now I know so many people, so I have to use this platform correctly. Um, all right. Joe B1. Joe B1 from Callback Dreams. I'm sorry. You you and I had a lot of conversations and 
it was not my aim for things to turn out this way. I felt like you understood me. I also felt like your hands were a bit tied in the situation. So it, it, it transpired how it did. Joby won. Sorry. Um, yeah, the whole production team at Callback Dreams, actually. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Like, genuinely, genuinely sorry. I was much younger then and I didn't know how to deal with things effectively and I wouldn't um I wouldn't say I'm proud to have um messed up something like something as beautiful as Vuzu Hustle man. Um my apologies to to the OGs that stuck their neck out for me. Hmm. Scoop bro. I'm sorry bro. I'm sorry, like you stuck your neck out for me to be in hip hop and then I just, I turned my back and I left that, you know. I was like, you know, niggas are playing with me. And I see how that affected you as well, bro. Scoop my katsini, say abo wangwegaz, puto amumtana, oli samfetsu. I'm sorry. Um, shwe, shwe. Shwe, shwe. Shoo, I'm sorry, Shoo. You, yo, you, you stuck your neck out for me multiple times. And you also got your head guillotined for that, so I'm sorry. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm here though trying to fix it. I'm here though trying to fix it. Second album is finally ready, so we're gonna fix it. The game will be reminded, don't worry. Um uh lunatic beats my boy yo so many years you spent dog you know keeping it um real with me at at the expense of your own relationships you know um I remember this other time I was with him in city lights r i p city lights we made a banging song. And one of the gentlemen that I, I had spoken about earlier on in the podcast gave him a call. And he was like, oh, nice song. Who, who are you there with? And he's like, yeah, it's me and it's Rubber Easy. And he's like, ah, okay, next song. Do you have another one? And he still decided to work with me even though the game was blackballing him. Like the most talented producer here in SA. Karakara, Mazulu, Fura. That's all him. And I, I always think if he hadn't spent any time fighting my cause, where would he be? Probably be rocking with Hit Boy and 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 Kanye overseas. Sorry. <clears throat> KFC also as a company, I won't lie, they supported me, bro. KFC South Africa. Um, even with all of that commotion that was going on, they still on the side were hollering at me, you know. Uh, making sure I was nice, I was easy, whatever gigs I needed, whatever sponsorship. Thank you. Um, <sighs> damn, I'm just, this is actually, I should make a song like that. That just inspired me. Because yeah, yeah. there's a lot of people that I actually owe that. Yeah, 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 you just yeah. inspired me, bro. I'm glad to be that vessel. And last but not least, I, I try to ask all of my guests this question. Huh. What's that one thing in life that you know for sure? One thing in life that I know for sure is we're all going to die and we're all not going to matter as soon as two weeks after you're buried. Eesh. So the best thing that you can do with that knowledge is Live like I don't exist, like the next person's you don't exist because as soon as you die, they're gonna be drinking at your alcohol, at your at your funeral, and your memory will just be turned into a hangover. So live with that understanding. We're all gonna die. Even the person whose judgment you're afraid of, they're going to die. Maybe even before you. 
This conversation was about uh, Flex relaying his truth, his version of the truth of how he experienced what he was going through at the heights of his fame, especially after winning the competition that he won. Um, please take an opportunity to reflect that the system is not what you think it is. And those that are crying about the system, they are not just making noise and trying to cause chaos. They are genuinely hurt and there are things that are happening behind the scenes that you may never know about. Flex also took accountability in this conversation. He apologized to people whom he felt he was he's wronged. He apologized to brands whom he felt he wronged. So once again, please take that into consideration as you have consumed the conversation with an open mind. I'll see you guys on the next episode. Introducing the epitome of luxury living, Galu Luxury Villas and Suites, your private sanctuary of opulence and elegance. Nestled amongst the lush, sun-kissed landscapes of Durban, KwaZulu-Natal, this Galu Luxury Villa is a paradise of tranquility, offering breathtaking panoramic views of the neighborhood. Step into a world of refined luxury where every detail has been meticulously crafted to create an atmosphere of sophistication and comfort. This villa is kept within a gated and secure property for your peace of mind. The Kalu Villa is available for both short-term and long-term stays, making it the ideal location for your next vacation or special event. This villa boasts spacious living areas and floor-to-ceiling windows that flood the interior with natural light, making you feel at one with the surrounding beauty paired with multiple terraces, an outdoor lounge and a dining area. Live the dream, make memories and indulge in the life you deserve. Contact us today to book your stay or to learn more about this exquisite property. Your oasis of opulence awaits.